This organized chaos video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Craig Little Drinker's video on Disney live action remakes from Robert Hamilton. Um, yeah, it does seem familiar. Critical Drinker did to do something on that recently, so we could absolutely check that out. Let's uh, let's type that guy in here. <laughs> One of the great things about Ah, Critical Drinker. Yeah. I will say this, he's kind of entertaining, but he he then he says something cringe. Oh my god, his view numbers have been ridiculous. Look at this. 1.8 million, 2.4 million, 2.2 million, 2 point Jesus Christ. How about the topic is it took six years for Dwayne The Rock Johnson to get WB to have Henry Cavill in his film. And there we talk about, and there's talk about Man of Steel 2. Well, I will say this. There's been talk of Man of Steel 2 for like, since Man of Steel 1. Um, whether it means anything is interesting. Um, but yeah, it did take a while to actually get Henry Cavill back as a Superman, which is kind of annoying because I... I felt like Henry Cavill is a great casting choice. I don't really feel like they've really given him enough to work with. But I, I love him in the role. Alright, so we are going to go ahead and dive into Critical Drinker enough with the remakes. You know, the older I get, the more I've come to realize how fucking lucky I was to grow up in the 1990s. It was a simpler, more optimistic, more innocent decade when movies were still awesome, Britannia was still cool, people didn't get fucking offended by everything. Lara Croft was an- Yeah, you know, people didn't get offended by the idea of uh, women being in Marvel movies. Uh, yeah, I don't recall that being a big deal in the 90s. That was nice awesome ass-kicking adventurer with a fantastic pair of, uh, guns, instead of a miserable waste of polygons that constantly apologizes for existing. Wow, he's upset that computer-generated character has smaller boobs. Ugh. Is this, is this, is this what he wants to spend his time on? It was a time when going online was a once a week treat that cost £10 an hour and required a trip to a special cafe instead of an all consuming dystopian nightmare where people spend millions of man hours arguing with 12 year old edgelords on the other side of the worlds. It was also the era of the Disney Renaissance. A well, uh, the 12 year old edgelords, is, you know a lot about them. That, that seems to be kind of your base, dude. Mm -hmm. Roughly 10 year period of unbridled creativity and commercial success when Disney's animation studios cranked out classic movies like Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Pocahontas, The Lion King, Hercules, Mulan and Tarzan. They were fun, exciting, heartwarming adventures that dealt with timeless themes and ideas and if you were a young kid in the mid 90s like me then I can pretty much guarantee you knew the soundtracks to these films off by heart. Truly, it seemed like Disney could do no wrong. <laughs> oh, how times have changed. The wide-eyed kids of the 90s are now cynical 30-somethings weighed down by the responsibilities of adult life, probably with asshole kids of their own, and quietly- Asshole kids? Jesus Christ, I, I hope you don't have kids. <laughs> Why? What? Asshole kids, ugh. <laughs> pining for the simple, carefree days of their childhoods. Meanwhile, the once family-friendly and patriotic Disney has mutated into a horrifyingly monstrous parody of its former self. An insatiable, franchise-gobbling monster relentlessly consuming good ideas and beloved characters to churn out an endless conveyor belt of bland, mediocre sludge. And since original creative thinking is for them what innovation and risk-taking is for NASA, it was only natural that they'd inevitably turn their eyes towards the past instead of the future. And truly, what better past to pilfer than the golden age of animated movies? Okay, so like, 
Disney is definitely going on this nostalgia wave, but all the movie studios are riding this nostalgia wave right now hard. Um, I am a little sick of it, to be 100% frank. Um, I do think it's worse represented in the Disney live action remakes, which, you know, like I said, I enjoy John Favreau's The Jungle Book, but, um, yeah, most of them are pretty bad and pointless. I mean, they certainly got off to a strong start with Beauty and the Beast, a live-action remake of the 1991 original, which basically replicated the entire movie shot for shots. Sure, you could probably argue how lazy it was to basically make the same exact film again and sell it to a whole new generation, but who the fuck cares? Disney certainly didn't, especially when it made a shit zillion dollars for them. Talk about money for old rope. Why take the chance on new, unproven ideas when you can basically dust off old scripts and sell people's childhoods back to them at an inflated price? The floodgates were well and truly open, and before you knew... Yeah, I mean, I actually don't entirely disagree with that. Um, I'm sure he's going to get to some cringy stuff later. But yeah, the Disney live action remakes are so, largely soulless. I would love them to be good. I would love this new Little Mermaid to be great. Um, Halle Bailey seems to have a great voice. Um, I don't have high hopes. <laughs> knew it, we were getting bombarded with modern day remakes of classic animated movies. The only problem is that with each new installment they got progressively more shit. But hey, they made the company shit tons of money so who cares? Well, all of that changed with the release of Mulan a couple of years ago, a film that went wrong in basically every way possible. For a start, it released in the middle of a global- It went wrong in every way po The Disney live action remakes have been kind of shit for a little bit, I mean- for what it's worth, Aladdin wasn't the worst thing ever, but I've never had desire to revisit it. I thought Lion King was pretty shit. That was a shot-for-shot -shot remake, even probably more faithfully than uh, Beauty and the Beast, except, uh, like, all the emotion you got in the cartoon characters was gone in the, the remake. Uh, let's look at comments here. Third, uh, Robert Hayon, third, he forgets the movie, like, Alice in Wonderland, the recent movies, yeah. Yeah, no, this isn't the worst video by him yet, but he's, we got like a nine minutes left for some cringe. He, he likes to dip it in there at least once in every video. It's like a, his everything everywhere all at once review is actually fine, except for some reason he takes a shot at Gen Z for no reason. <laughs> pandemic when the prospect of going to the cinema was about as appealing as a colonic irrigation using habanero chilies. Ah! That's disturbing. <laughs> Attempts to pander to the Chinese market backfired spectacularly since it fucked up most aspects of Chinese culture and history. And for rather obvious reasons, Western audiences weren't exactly thrilled by all things Chinese at that time either. As a result, the film bombed, and it wasn't the only one to attract negative attention. The first teaser trailer for the upcoming remake of The Little Mermaid has- And I've gone over this so many times, in fact, uh... I think it's the Geeks and Gamers video. I actually show you my numbers behind the scenes, and it's not what these apps are reporting. These downvotes are grossly overestimated. So I don't know what the actual downvote numbers are, but yeah, the these uh, these downvote apps for YouTube are not accurate. Has got one of the most brutal YouTube ratios since Frosk decided to publicly torpedo her own company live on air. And to be honest, it's not entirely hard to see why, because this movie basically exemplifies everything that's bad about these fucking remakes. And no, I'm not talking about the fact that the actor playing a mythical sea monster has got slightly different melanin levels in her skin. Disney baited the fact. Well, good, because I'm getting sick of that argument with that one because they knew they could use the result in backlash to silence any actual criticism of the movie and they fell for it hook line and sinker <laughs> okay that's enough nautical references well i mean you guys fell for it hook line and sinker by taking well you see i don't i don't recall critical drinkers line on it but a lot of his friends uh geeks and gamers ryan canal they definitely fell for it hook line and sinker and freaked out over oh my god a black mermaid like Seriously, it's a mythical creature, I don't give a shit. ...for now. The bigger issues are more fundamental ones that you can apply to basically all of the Disney remake movies. I mean, for a start, take a look at the colour palette of this thing. Look how dark and muted and subdued everything is, and then... I 
made that same critique in my video. Yes, uh, I do not like the lighting they're using in that teaser. Now, maybe it's just a teaser and they used, maybe they used real underwater shots, maybe? I don't know. That seemed kind of uh, unnecessarily realistic for this movie. But yeah, it didn't look good. And compare it to the original animated movie. You see how much more bright and vibrant and interesting that world looks? Yeah, it's completely unrealistic that the deep ocean would look this way, but it doesn't really matter because it's an animated movie with its own visual style, and that style allows the artist to set their own rules for how you engage with it as the audience. But the moment you bring live action into the equation, you immediately constrain yourself with the limitations of what people expect to see in the real world. That means the deep ocean is now a dark and forbidden boding place where Ariel is framed like some kind of terrifying monster instead of a plucky heroine longing to experience I didn't see her framed as a terrifying monster in that teaser um she's just swimming around and then we see her face Ter okay mm. experience the world above Jesus if you swap out the soundtrack for a horror theme the face reveal feels like it should be more like this oh! This particular problem was- Where the fuck did you get that in that teaser? It's not a good teaser, but what? <laughs> It's especially noticeable in The Lion King, where the animators had been given the almost impossible task of anthropod- Anthropomorphing- Anthropologizing- Fuck! Humanizing the animal characters while also keeping them looking photorealistic. And the results were... Uh... Take a look at the original. I mean, I, I actually thought the actual, like, photorealism computer animation Lion King looked fantastic. Um, but yeah, it was uh, just like a remake and there's nothing really new add to it. Just some emotion taken away movie. You see how expressive and compelling the performances are? Yeah, obviously real animals can't move, talk, and gesticulate anything like this, but it doesn't matter because just like the Little Mermaid movie, it's an animated film with its own rules about how these things work, so it becomes very easy to suspend your disbelief. Supposedly realistic CGI, on the other hand, doesn't have that luxury. And Jesus Christ, don't even get me started about Will Smith and Aladdin. God, I miss traditional si Okay, I'm gonna have a really hot take here. Um, Will Smith had an impossible job in that role, and I think he did as well as you could expect. His singing was a little, uh, I felt his singing was a little subpar, which was kind of shocking, because I thought, uh, objectively, I think Will Smith is a better singer than, uh, Robin Williams. But Robin Williams put more oomph into it, and Will Smith seemed to, to hold back in the singing. But overall, he could it could have gone much worse, uh, to his credit. Not a great movie, like I said. It's, uh, there's worse Disney live-action remakes, though. Dell animation. Yeah, I know it's more labor-intensive, and I know it can't deliver anything like the detail you get in Pixar movies, but holy shit, there's just something so much more satisfying about it. Knowing that actual artists... Okay, uh... We will finish this, and then we'll go ahead and look at, uh, what, Smutcast on Double Toasted? I don't know if I've looked at them before. So, yeah, um, that sounds like a fun thing to look at. So, after this. Had to draw and animate this stuff frame by frame instead of pre-built character models running a series of programmed movements is just so much more human and charming. Every fucking Pixar movie nowadays looks exactly like the one that came before it. They all have the same bland, generic, soulless look about them, like you're eating a meal made from the same... He's saying everyone nowadays, but he's showing clips from essentially classic Pixar. So what's his point? <laughs> in basic ingredients, only arranged in a slightly different way. I mean, would it kill movie studios to release the occasional film using traditional animation for once? Another. Uh, true. I would like to see more traditional animation movies. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think. I think it was John Laster who, uh, you know, he's a guy with issues. But I think he said, you know, especially when Disney bought up Pixar, he was like, okay, Pixar should do computer animated movies because that's their bag. And then Disney, uh, if they're going to continue to do animation, should just do uh, hand-drawn animation. Now, of course, Disney disagreed and they do computer animation too. And honestly, their computer animation is fine. But yeah, I, I did like that idea of, hey, you know, you already have an animation division for computer generated stuff. Let's use this our animation division to do the classics versions. I thought that was a good point, and yeah, that did not happen. 
Another issue that's been coming up more and more with these remakes is the alteration of characters and storylines to appeal to modern audiences. Okay, if your whole idea is to appeal to modern audiences by including women and minorities, then uh, that's actually a good thing. Mm. It started out with little things, like Emma Watson insisting that Belle be an inventor and engineer in Beauty and the Beast, because I guess being a fun-loving, intelligent young woman desperate to get out into the wider world and escaping vicariously through the medium of books just wasn't enough for her. She had to make- I don't remember a story. Did, did she push for that? I mean- I mean, I don't have an issue with that, I just don't remember it being a thing she pushed for. Take her into Elon fucking Musk as well, but whatever. Uh... I think it's worth noting, uh, Elon Musk doesn't really invent shit. Uh, he, he makes tunnels in the ground, there are hazards. <laughs> It was just a minor change that didn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but what it did do was set the precedent. The problems, however, became more severe in Mulan, which basically- Fourth, he's, act uh, he's acting like all Disney movies look different, with few exceptions, they look the same. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's variations in the animation style, but it's kind of the same. It's like, like Don Bluth movies all have the same look, too, for the most part basically reworked the protagonist's entire character arc to pander to the insufferable modern convention that female characters have to be fundamentally great at everything right off the bat. No okay, yeah, no, have there been some like that? Yeah, Mulan's probably a good example. That live-action Mulan was not good. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, the idea has been let's have more female-led movies, and I think it's worth noting there have been a billion shitty written male-led movies so having more female-led movies and having some of them be bad just seems kind of be par for the course no inspiring lessons about the value of hard work and perseverance here it was all about appealing to female empowerment in the laziest most superficial way possible speaking of which here's a little hint from a january 2022 interview with star halle bailey about the direction the little mermaid is going to take I think everyone will be pleasantly surprised by some updates of the themes of the film, more so on Ariel's side of women empowerment and her taking her power back. I mean, I thought the original Ariel was pretty empowered already, considering she saves Prince Eric's life on- Okay, you spent the beginning complaining about how a lot of these, like, you, you complained about Beauty and the Beast as kind of being a shot-for-shot -shot remake in a lot of ways. Now she's saying we're adding stuff to Little Mermaid, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna complain because they're adding stuff because the original is fine. Yes, the original is fine, but you know what? I don't want the original movie again. I want them to do something different. If I want the original movie, I'll watch the original movie. More than one occasion, and her decisions drive the entire course of the story, but whatever. I guess because she occasionally needs help from other people, she's just not modern enough. Can't wait for Eric to be transformed into the same useless bumbling- Yeah, no, I, I kind of- yeah, I'm, I'm bored of this drinker. Yeah, he's a- uh... He's definitely the biggest of these guys. This isn't... he. He's objectively... He's not the worst of these anti-woke guys. But he is the biggest one, for sure. Um... But yeah, uh, this isn't his worst video, and it just comes out kind of boring, because he doesn't have a... Not a whole lot to say, really. Just like, oh, Disney live-action remakes bad. Yes. Yes, they are buffoon template that Disney used for every single male character in their movies these days, and Ariel to be an unstoppable kick-ass girl boss who fixes everything all by herself. Modern writing, everyone. Yeah, and, and how often has there been a movie with a male lead where he's kick-ass and fixes everything all by himself? Fuck knows what it must be like to be a little boy growing up in the 2020s. The sad thing though is that actresses like Halle Bailey are gonna get unfairly caught up in the crossfire here. I mean, I'm sure she's a perfectly nice person that'll do a great job with the role, but none of that really matters because all people are talking about now is the backlash against her casting. And for what? Well, I, I, all people are talking about are the backlash. What about the actual backlash with her casting? I feel like the big story is that there is a huge backlash against her casting, not that the fact that people are talking about that backlash. You're just going to ignore the actual backlash and be like, oh, it's terrible how people are talking about this. It's like the South Park thing where uh, 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 the priest goes to the church and they're like, oh, you know, these priests are molesting children. And he's like, yeah, how can we get them to shut up about it? Yeah, it's you're complaining about people pointing out the backlash instead of complaining about the actual backlash. <laughs> 
If the real objective here was to create more lead roles for diverse actors, which is absolutely a good thing, then why not come up with new stories specifically for them, instead of deliberately stirring up controversy by crowbarring them into stories that have already been told? There's an entire world of rich cultural traditions, legends and folklore from every conceivable country, race and creed just waiting for you to try out, so why keep retreading the same ground over and over again? Why keep retelling stories that have already been told far better by previous Previous generations. Oh, yeah. Yep, uh, Hollywood is about money. Uh, devastating uh, twist there. I did not see that coming. Yeah, of course. And I guess that's what this really comes down to. A quick, easy and reliable way of making money that requires minimal investment of risk or creative energy. It's the same reason that Lucasfilm keeps digging at the hollowed out core of Star Wars. Why Paramount subjects us to endless Star Trek prequels. Why Amazon are trying to launch their very own Game of Thrones using Tolkien's legacy as a billion dollar canvas to finger paint on. And it all just feels so hollow and meaningless. Well, it is true. I'd like to see more original get stuff get started up. I mean, a lot of the franchise stuff is... I mean, it's a product of Marvel. Marvel did the franchise uh, film, and they fucking nailed it. And now everybody wants something similar to that, understandably. And they're all trying to get their own piece. I would prefer more original stuff, because I think this is getting a bit ridiculous. But, you know, some of the stuff is good. Uh, Rings of Power, this, like that that series is such a slow burn. But it ends really well. Um, I really liked the last couple episodes of that season. You know, and there's some gems in it. Like these stories were generated by some AI in a lab somewhere in order to generate the highest return possible on investments. I mean, I'm under no illusions that big movie studios were ever particularly invested in artistic expression, but... Alright, right burn. I feel like they say the same thing about Daniel Craig's James Bond. They wanted a Bond closer to Sean Connery or Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, well, I felt like Daniel Craig's James Bond, which was interesting, was, uh, kind of in the way he played it almost, too, and, like, the way he would talk about it, even off camera, even though that doesn't really play into the movies. Like, like, yeah, he did a lot of the same actions as your traditional James Bond, you know, sleep with the chicks, kill a whole bunch of people, but he felt a bit more reflective, and I know Daniel Craig hated playing that character he did not like being james bond but he was really good at it um but yeah um yeah like uh sean connery's james bond would not fly they would have to tone him down quite a bit because uh goldfinger if you ever seen goldfinger that is a really fun movie but he definitely does some sexual assault and rape in that movie which is bad and classic James Roger Moore would do some stuff like that too. It was a, it was questionable back in the day. Uh, Daniel Craig could not, would not do that. Mm. Holy shit, there was at least a pretense of trying to tell a worthwhile story along the way. The movies of the Disney Renaissance are so fondly remembered now because they struck the perfect balance between timeless ideas, likeable characters, contemporary humour, creative talent and vibrant colourful animation. They sold themselves on their own merits instead of resorting to member berries or cheap manufactured controversy to drum up interest and as a result they had to be really fucking good in order to work. And that's the problem. What we're producing now isn't. It's like last night's stale dinner quickly reheated in a microwave and plonked on your plate. But drinker, you magnanimous maestro of media mastication, I hear you say. Why worry about this stuff when the original movies are always going to exist? No matter how bad things get now, we can always fire up the classic originals and make sure that the next generation gets to enjoy the kind of timeless entertainment we did as kids. Oh, you sweet summer child, you. The problem is that fewer and fewer people bother to invest in physical media these days, because I guess the effort of heaving their fat, sweaty arse... It's not a question of physical media. Like, these movies are all on Disney+, Plus, dude. ...arses off the couch and shoving a disc into a player is just too big of a time sink in their busy lives. Instead, they resort to doing what pretty much everyone else does these... Don't worry, we're almost done. I'm a little bored too, but at this point I'm like, I'm gonna finish this. Um, this is not, this is a... I guess I would say this is a higher quality video from him, but it's kind of just boring. Um, for the most part, I'm kind of agreeing with a lot of his points. He is getting some cringe in there though, which is just kind of annoying. 
these days and download their movies from a streaming service. But the big problem with digital media is that you don't really own the thing that you're watching. All you've got is a license to download the source file and if that source file should ever be removed or altered, well, then you're shit out of luck. We've already seen- Yeah, no, I really hate how uh, you when you watch Peter Pan, you get a message before it saying uh, some of the cult- some of the uh, representation of Native Americans in there um, is kind of questionable. You know, that whole, like, couple second message before that movie starts completely ruins the whole fucking movie makes it unwatchable. Um, what are you talking about? It's still there. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> the little edits and tweaks that companies have started making to older movies that are now considered problematic. How long do you really think it's going to be before it starts happening to newer stuff? Movies that contain scenes or depictions or story beats that someone somewhere in some miserable corner of Twitter finds offensive. Characters that don't quite align with the rules of modern writing. Storylines that go against the message. Yeah, you know what? If the message is, hey, everybody's equal and should be treated equally, then I'm all for the message. More message, please. The fact is, the past is no longer sacred and it definitely isn't safe. Because there are fewer and fewer people who care about preserving it, it's more vulnerable than ever to the insidious, grasping manipulations of the present. Little by little, scene by scene, movie by movie, the stories that once captivated and inspired us are being Okay, I feel like this has been almost over for like two hours now. <laughs> quietly removed and supplanted by cheap, cynical, soulless reproductions. And if we're not careful, if we don't push back against this shit while there's still time, then we may just find ourselves in a world where there's nothing left to protect. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. Okay, um, yeah, that that is not one of his worst ones, but uh, it's bad, it's bad. Uh... Yeah, but here is the virtue signaling. Yeah, uh, he's virtue signaling. Oh, you know, I'm... You know, fuck it. I don't even care. <laughs> that was one of his better videos, and by that I mean it was one of his more boring videos. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. Do you enjoy pain? Pain don't hurt. 